In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to create a photo transfer. Sometimes it's called an acrylic transfer and some call it a gel medium transfer. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll start with a basic sheet of watercolor paper and I'm going to cover the surface with acrylic gesso. Now this is an optional step, but the gesso application will make the paper a little bit stronger and more sturdy. Now of course you're going to want to let this application of gesso dry completely before going on to the next step. Now I'm using a photocopy of an image here. I've found that photocopies transfer the best. Some people claim that you can transfer images with an inkjet printout, but I haven't found much success with that. Now we're gonna prepare the surface here, and I'm just gonna use various colors of acrylic paint. First, I'm gonna mix a bit of yellow and raw umber, and I'm gonna put a light coat on the surface. Now, I want some of the areas to have a bit more heavier application of the umber. So once I get the surface covered here, I'm going to go back and make some highlighted areas with the raw umber. This is just gonna add a bit of variety to the surface and make it a little bit more interesting. I'm also gonna allow my brush strokes to show through, again, for added interest. Now, while the surface is still wet, I'm going to take the opposite end of my brush and just scratch out some patterns. Again, this is completely optional. You can get very creative with this and do a variety of different textures or patterns if you like. It really doesn't matter. It's completely up to you. Now we'll revisit the photo that I'm going to transfer, and I want to think about the shapes that happen in the photo, and I'm just going to create some accent areas with some other colors. We'll start with a magenta here, and it, that will kind of line up with the top portion of the car. I'll make another shape for the body of the car, and again, this doesn't have to be exact. In fact, I don't want it to be exact. I want some of these shapes to exceed the boundaries of the photocopy that I transfer. Maybe we'll add a bit of phthalo blue in some areas, maybe back near where the tree line might be. All right, and here again, I'm gonna go ahead and put some textural marks in the surface. Again, completely optional. You don't wanna overdo this, however, because you don't want your final image to be too busy. Next, we'll prepare the photocopy that we're gonna transfer, and I'm just gonna tear the edges to give it a bit more of an organic feel on the surface. These acrylic transfers kind of have a mysterious look to them when they're finished. So having the edges be a little bit loose is just going to add to that effect. All right, now we're ready to transfer the image to the surface. So we're going to grab our gel medium. I'm going to use the regular gel, which has a semi-gloss finish. And we're going to apply it very liberally to the surface where we're going to transfer the image. So I'm going to put very thick applications here on the surface. We're going to make sure that we cover all the areas where our photo is going to be transferred. And then we can line up the photo with the colors that we've already applied to the surface. Again, this doesn't have to be exact. In fact, if it's off a bit, it's just going to add to the overall image. Now we're going to work the photo onto the surface, and I like to kind of start in the center and work my way outward. I like to make small circles with my fingers as I'm working it onto the surface, and to ensure that we have a nice connection, I'm going to use a brayer here. If you don't have a brayer, you can use the back of a wooden spoon, and it will do just as well. Now any areas that we might have missed will go back. Usually this will happen around the corners and we'll just add a bit more of the gel medium. And of course I'll check all of the edges just to make sure that there are no loose edges that might have some ink that needs to be transferred. And then I'll go over the surface again with the brayer one last time. Now, you're going to want to let this sit for a while. You can use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time, but a good waiting time is at minimum at least an hour, perhaps 24 hours. Now we're ready to remove the paper, and to do this, we're just going to work in small areas. I'm going to use a spray bottle and spray a bit of water on the surface, and then I'll use a washcloth here and just gently remove the paper from the surface. I'm going to use small circles again to remove the paper. You don't want to do too large of an area at one time, and you also don't want to scrub too vigorously. You want to be careful that you don't remove the ink itself. 
as you can see, this process becomes a little bit messy as the pieces of wet paper fall off the surface. So you wanna make sure that you're working in an area that can get a little bit messy. In this case, I've put a board underneath my paper so that I can just scrape that paper off to the side and then carry the board to the trash can. This is a slow process and it might take you a few minutes to remove all of the paper. Now, once your image is allowed to dry, you might notice a few areas where the white paper still shows through. You can remove this paper again by just hitting those areas again with the spray bottle and then gently rubbing with a washcloth. All right, now that my image has been transferred, I'm going to create a rough edge around the image. Again, to just add to that overall effect that I'm going for. Now, you can use a ruler to lay down and pull the edge to create a decal that's a little bit of a straighter line. For this demonstration, though, I'd, I'm not really concerned about creating a straight line. In the end, I'm going to hang this in a frame where it floats behind the mat. And once our edges have been removed, our photo transfer is complete. And like I said, uh, in this case, I can hang it inside of a mat and let it float there behind the mat. If you enjoyed this video and you're ready to learn more about drawing and painting, why not check out our comprehensive membership program at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes great video courses, weekly live instruction, downloadable eBooks, and even lesson plans for teachers. Just click on the button in the corner to learn more now. You can also get three free course modules from our program. One from the Secrets to Drawing, one from Pastel Landscape Mastery, and a third from the Oil Painting Master Series. Each module includes a video and an ebook. To learn more about how you can get your free course modules, again, just click on the button in the corner. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can get access to all of the new videos as we publish them. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you the best of luck in your artistic journey.